You see, here's another image for you. Imagine you are in contact with the floor. Imagine you are a fountain. Water comes up through the pipes and it explodes out of here. Now, the second you do something like this, something like this, or something like this, what you're basically doing is you're blocking your pipes. And you have a choice of one of two things to do then. Either you have to, which is the most natural thing, you have to turn the volume down nice and neutral so you can carry on standing like this comfortably, but that means your voice will go very, very bland and everyone will fall asleep. Or uh, you have to start doing weird stuff. Twitches come out of strange places because it's not... Now, this isn't happening over here, but the tendency, if you start like this and you want your voice... So, that, so simply the act of saying Boris or mushrooms or anything like that, if, if the voice is not supporting it, and you'll see this with politicians all the time, you, you think, my God, he must go home with a really sore neck because he's trying, he realises he needs to keep his voice alive, but the hands aren't supporting it. So it's having to come out of somewhere else. So you imagine it coming out of here and here and here, and then the bigger the gestures, and this is often the case here, people work with IT, where they're training people and everyone's on a laptop. Well, if you want to kill your voice completely, even better than holding notes, sit down, look at a screen, type, and then start talking to people at the same time. It will kill your voice completely. And I remember working with an IT company once, and uh, all we did for change, the, tra the trainer closed down the screen, projected it onto a wall, and so now she had to do bigger gestures. Yeah? So when you open this file, this menu will drop down, this comes across here. Now, because she had to do a bigger, the voice then became bigger as well.